a great search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit every single week. Lady Ada uses her power of engineering to help you. Yes, you find the things that you want on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is a great search this week? Okay, this week um, I am looking to replace the uh, low cost Class D amplifier that I've been using in so many of my designs. It's gone NRND, uh, not recommended for new designs. And uh, one thing I've learned over the chip shortage is that once you start seeing that, um, try to get away from that part as quickly as possible because it can, you know, it used to be that things would go NRND, but you'd still be able to get them for a while. I'm actually a little um, nervous about that now because I got bit a couple of times by parts that were NRND and then immediately disappeared, evaporated, and there was no last time by. So um, let's go to the computer real fast and I'll show off this chip. And then I'll go to the overhead uh, later. Um, so on a lot of our boards, we use uh, this little speaker. This is a 7.5 millimeter by 7.5 millimeter speaker. Um, they're actually available on DigiKey too. There's magnetic buzzers and they, they're a jelly bean part. They come in uh, a variety of different makes. Um, and they're, you know, about like 50, 60 cents in quantity. Um, so these are, these are a great alternative to um plug-in speakers they're inexpensive um as you see they're fully surface mount um they come in tape and reel so unlike piezo buzzers um you can solder them in and and they're fairly loud um the only thing that's um a little bit iffy about them is they they use a fair amount of current they um they are magnetic and uh they, you know they require 100 milliamps so it's not, you know, a ton of current, but it means that you can't just drive them from a microcontroller pin. You're not going to, you're not going to get the, the nice strong tones. It's, that's different than piezos, which you pretty much can drive from a, a pin. So what we've always done is, um, as you see here, the, this is the buzzer and this is the audio coming out here. And this is the, the two pins of the um, inductor inside. There's a little disc that vibrates is we have this um, PAM 8301 diodes ink class d amplifier with like six pins it's a very inexpensive part it's like 15 cents and it basically has like audio in you you know put a 0.1 microfarad cap on the inside because it's very high impedance and so you don't need a big blocking cap and then you have like one shutdown pin power ground and then two class d bridge tide load outputs um, and what's nice about the the class D is, you know, first off, it is it's fairly power efficient. It doesn't heat up the the coil um, by having a bias go through it. Um, it's, it's class D. It's it's differential. You don't need blocking caps. It's just overall like a really nice um, design. And like I said, it's very inexpensive at about fifteen cents. Um, without any, you know, you only need uh, one. I, I put like a filter on the inside, but basically you only need a resistor and a capacitor to, to run this thing. Um, it's low on component cost. It's easy to pick in place. Um, and it's about the same price as a couple transistors. So it's like, why don't you just do a class AB? It's about the same price and you get like a class D performance. Uh, it doesn't sound too bad either. So let me go. Um, I don't know if this is going to work, but... Hold on, let me, whoops, go here. So this is, oh, one second. It's got hooked. So this is the speaker. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's on a macro pad and it's just kind of doing a little booby boppy. And then you can do, um, one thing I like to do for a lot of, projects is I just have a little coin like a little indicator coin so it's it's like a like a beep it's not a very loud effect um and that's again using the PAM 8 you know 8301 with um this uh this little amplifier okay great but you know I'm, I'm going to digikey and they helpfully tell me well there's lots in stock but they're not recommended for new designs um and the substitute is actually like there isn't any of the substitute in stock either so i thought what we would do is we would find a substitute for this so um what we're looking for is um you know it's gonna be a class d mono because i only like i need to be small and cheap and it's the smallest and cheapest is going to be always um mono output class d um, the power per channel, I mean, as long as it can drive basically, you know, eight ohms, the wattage doesn't really matter. 
Um, another nice thing about this amp is it ran, it would run from about 2.5 to 5.5 volts, and so you could use it with 3.3 or 5 volt power in Logic. In fact, what I'd often do is power the amplifier from 5 volts or battery, whatever is the highest voltage I have on the board. But then, you know, the Logic level that goes into it is 3. And of course, I want it to be surface mount. The package, I don't know, you know, I might not be able to get SOT 23.6. Um, and in fact, actually, sorry, I'm, well, yeah, quickly I'll go here. So at dives.com, you can search for the parts. It's like, well, what do, you know, what do they have? And um, they also say, yeah, it's not recommended for new designs. And if you go to the data sheet, um, they do have a couple recommendations, which we'll, which we'll see. So this is another good place to go look for uh, recommendations at the top of the data sheet. Um, they'll, you know, dives is going to have a better idea of what they stock. That's a better option. Um, and then this is the just the usage because so you can see it's like I love this thing because it's so simple. You just have like you know, coupling cap in, power supply, speaker out, shut down, you're done. Just not don't need anything else. No gigantic blocking caps. Um, okay, so let's find surface mount mono class D in the amplifier category. Uh, we're gonna look for active because that's what we want and uh normally stocking so let's see what's available and pricing isn't really important kind of important to me so i'm gonna look for pricing at like five thousand pieces or more um so there's a couple of good options so one of the options that is recommended so this is the this is the unfortunate thing is that they're like okay why don't you just use the 8013 or 812, you know, 8013 or 8014. Um, well, these are uh, very affordable. They're about 20 cents, but they're both uh, BGA package. Now, I will say that um, the BGA package for this one in particular, you know, if if you don't need to use the N pin, um, if you don't mind having it be on all the time, you can tie N to VDD, and that way you don't have to, because this is a 0.4 millimeter pitch. So, you know, you're, you're dealing with either... A fan out or very um or like a via in ball pad i'm not a huge fan um because i like to keep my manufacturing simple um the 8014 is a little bit nicer because at least the center pad is the power uh pvdd so you know yes it's it is also a bga but at least you can tie the center pad out here and then you know because you're probably going to be using the same power as uh vdd but we'd like to avoid that. So the next options are um, the 8302 and the 8304. Uh, both of these are, sorry, the 80304 is actually recommended. So the 8302 is a little bit older. And I'll show you the comparisons. Because I actually use the 8302 a lot. Um, so one thing that is nice is, by the way, the 8304 is available in, if I needed it, that, that small space, it's available in this uh, tiny DFN 3030. Um, the biggest difference kind of for the, so 8302 and 8304, let's go to the right here, is the 8304 will give you three watts um, into four ohms. That's another thing. These, do, these can go into four ohms, which is quite a bit. Um, but the voltage range is a little bit different. This one, you know, it's closer to three volts. This one goes down to, to two. Are you running it off of two AA batteries? Then maybe you'd want to use the 8302. Whereas if you um, can guarantee a 3.3 volt power supply minimum, <clears throat> you can go with the uh, 8304. Both of these actually are pin compatible as well. And then... Um, the PAM 8304 also is available in DFN. This is another option. This wasn't in stock, but I did take a look at it. This is a little bit, you know, the um, the the part number, uh, you know, 82011 is like, okay, they're obviously kind of getting in on that PAM 83 series. Um, also very similar, pretty much the same uh, setup. There is differential input uh, with this resistors and capacitors and then an output driver um this one just has like i guess they just have a standard package that they use but that said um so what i ended up doing is i do like the um 8304 but um the fact that the 8302 is just like there's more in stock and um i do already stock it i'm pretty much just going to redesign everything that used the 8301 to use the 8302 and 
you know, it's it's basically the same. There's actually it's actually the same gain as well. So what I did, <clears throat> if you can go to the overhead, is uh, I have a uh, this is a um, Pam. Wait, hold on, let me uh, focus lock. This is a Pam eighty three hundred two uh, amplifier, and you know inside there is uh, twenty four dB of gain. And um, I just took off the. Um, I had a, a terminal block here. looked like looked like this before. And I just hot aired it off, and soldered on one of those little speakers. And then um, on the original design, there was a little potentiometer. Um, but what I did is I kind of removed, you know, to mimic what the A A three hundred one would have. I um, replace the input resistors and capacitors and then put a little uh, high pass, sorry, a low pass filter um, here because um, the output from this RP2040 is uh, the high frequency PWM. So this comes in, the high frequency is kind of filtered a little bit to smooth out, um, even though the class D kind of, you know, obviously it's high frequency as well, but it does remove a little bit of the hiss. And then um, in here, there's a little bit of a uh, input gain uh, modifier. So the default gain that these have is is 24 dB, um, which is like five times gain. I can't, can't remember off the top of my head. But I want one-to-one -one gain because I'm actually getting 3.3 .3 volts output from here. So this is actually kind of like a, it's like a current booster voltage follower. It's actually a very, not really amplifying. I mean, it's current amplifying, but it's not voltage amplifying. Um, so what you can do with these, I'll show you this one, one of the data sheets does not have a diagram of the internals, but one of them does. And I think it's this one. Let me show you it. Oh, can you go to the computer? Sorry. Pardon me. Um, so this is the inside. And so, you know, you're like, okay, here's how you wire it up. You have differential input. They just have a blocking cap. But what's inside actually is here's that, uh, sorry, it's 15 gain. Um, so there's this 15 times gain because they're expecting you to give it, you know, um, a couple millivolts, maybe 100 millivolts peak to peak signal, and then it boosts it up and, and drives your output to three, you know, plus or minus uh, five volts um, differentially. However, um, because I, I'm, my input is three volts peak to peak already, and I want basically three volts output what you can do is you add another resistor here 150k approximately and that turns this gain into into one so this normally is 50, 150k over 10k gain so you add another resistor on the input and so let me show you what that looks like here this is 300k ignore these values because these values are not correct but by adding um like if i have this be you know, like 140K, this is 140K, and this would actually be 0.1 microfarad. Now I have unity gain. Um, you still have to, even if you have, um, by the way, uh, it's differential input. If you have um, single-ended input going into this chip, you'll still need to have um, this filter going to ground to, to balance out the, um, the differential input. Um, but now I've got the same... 3.3 volt in, 3.3 volt out, driving directly to my speaker. Um, you don't need to have a ferret capacitor output, but it's nice if you can fit it on your board. Still very inexpensive, and um, I always get very nice output from this. Also good for little speakers, and yeah, it's up to three watts, so you can use this for um, you know fairly large four or eight ohm speakers. So this is my pick for the great search. That's a great search. Where in the world is that part I need?